Hi everyone, welcome. It's so good having you here. I don't go on camera very often and that's because I'm not comfortable in front of the camera. Um, we'll leave that as it is for now. But let me tell you what's been going on. Where's Patrick been, right? This, uh, you've probably heard in the media or maybe online, whether online or on television, about a Kronos hack. Kronos is a payroll system, more of a scheduling payroll system, that a lot of large corporations use. Um, Corning Glass, uh, Volkswagen, I could go on and on. There are a lot of big companies that affect it, including the one I work for. And it affected thousands of employees at my company. And this started right at the beginning of the new year when I had big plans for YouTube and these videos, this being the first episode. So there's been a delay. Here it is what the, you know, we're almost two weeks into the new year and I'm just doing my first video. For that, I sincerely apologize. I truly do. I did not intend for this to happen, but this hack was a monstrous problem for the employees of my company. And my job has mostly been calming people's nerves, having one-on-ones, meeting with agents and with a lot of different people in the company, trying to find a way to alleviate a lot of attrition, loss of employees in the company. So I've been very tied up with that and it's finally moving forward in a positive way. So that's good news. And that means, well, I could do this video and I apologize for the noise. I have a cat oh, that's in the next room wanting in here and I don't let them in here. And they don't like when I'm in here because they can hear. If I'm just making a video, a soaping video or something, they generally leave me alone most of the time, but they saw me come in here. So they're like, we know you're in there. We're going to get you. B anyway, so back to the video. Why am I doing this video? I get questions. I get uh, emails. I get messages in my Etsy store. I get messages on videos that I've done in the past. And I thought rather than answering them to one individual, why not do videos about those topics that people have the most questions about. One of the biggest questions that people generally ask me when they see me making my goat milk soap is why is it frozen? Why do you freeze your, your soap, your, <laughs> freeze your goat milk? Well, most of my soap is made with 100% milk, whether it be goat milk or donkey milk or when I'm lucky, camel milk or um, reindeer milk last year. Nonetheless, all those milks, uh, I like to use 100% milk. I find, in my opinion, it makes a much better soap. It's creamier, um, less sudsy for sure, but a lot creamier and I don't know. I just put some more of a conditioning bar and a lot of my customers agree with that. And so for that reason, uh, I generally freeze mine, okay? A lot of people will make the make their soap with water, with reduced water. And then somewhere in that process, before they pour it in the molds, they add a little bit of milk to it. Well, I want mine 100% milk, so that's why I freeze it. But why freeze it instead of just using milk and mixing the sodium hydroxide, the lye, with it? And in case you're wondering, all soap has lye in it, sodium hydroxide. It may not be listed in the ingredients because it's oftentimes listed as sodium palmate, which is, that just means that it is lye that's been mixed with palm oil to create soap. And you'll see this a lot of times, or you'll see uh, saponified oils of olive oil, uh, and you'll see a common, maybe coconut oil and shea butter and all those things. That just means that lye has been used. Even if you buy soap that you believe like melt and pour, that you think, oh, that doesn't have any lye in it. Well, it was made with lye. The lye is no longer present in that soap or any of the soap that I or other soapers make. 
because there's a chemical process that lye mixes with those oils and creates a new product, which is soap. So the lye doesn't exist in it anymore. Anyway, that's a story for perhaps another video. But this video is going to be about why I freeze milk. So stick with me. This is the very first episode of Hey Patrick. <laughs> And I, I have several of these that are I've got in the can, as they say, that I've already started filming and putting together. This is the first episode. I hope you enjoy it. Leave some comments or leave some questions that you'd like to see in future videos. Thank you so much, everyone. It's really great to be back with you again. I hope to see you back soon. Let's start the video. Hi, everyone. I recently had someone ask me why I freeze the goat milk. I've mentioned this in several videos, but maybe it's not getting across. And I thought, hey, why not just do a video and show why you would freeze your goat milk? So I'm going to show you. Here I have liquid milk and here I have frozen milk. So I'm going to add one moment here some lye to each just a little bit as if we're making soap or getting ready to make soap and I'm just mixing the lye solution into the milk the lye solution I mean the lye the sodium hydroxide into the milk Fantastic. Now maybe you can start to see the color changing with the thawed milk. I can tell you that it smells quite bad too. Where the frozen milk that melts is remaining white. And that's because the regular milk that's not frozen, the, I should say the thawed or the liquid milk, heats up very high. This is currently hot enough to burn you if you held it against your hand, where this is still very cold. So what's happening here is the lye is actually burning the fats in the milk. Can you see how that's separating and not very attractive looking? While this is remaining very white, And this is why it's a good, and it smells terrible. <laughs> Burned milk has just an awful smell and something you want to avoid. Now, here's what I will tell you. Even if it turns yellow like this and looks like this, you can still make soap with it. And many people do. Uh, the downside is that you, because of adding it at this temperature, you have actually destroyed some of the constituents that do survive in soap. And many of the constituents of goat milk do survive saponification. But by burning it so early on, before it has a chance to mix with the oils and things, where the heat's distributed throughout the whole loaf, you end up with just kind of this mucky solution. Now, I will tell you that this will make soap. These will both make equally decent soap. This will lighten, actually, in the soap in time. This yellow will lighten back down, not quite to this white color, but very close to it. Okay? And that's really, it's, it is a matter of taste. Some people use powdered milk, but even with powdered milks, if you use them in their liquid state, you mix them with water, you still want to freeze them. Because even though they don't contain a lot of the fats, that like this raw goat milk has, 
it can still be a problem in those because there are other things in the process of mixing the water back with the powder. Um, some of the fats that are left in it, well, unless it's a completely non-fat, but why would you want to use a non-fat milk to put in soap, right? But if you did, um, you can still experience some discoloration and bad smell from it. So this I won't be using. That's why I only mixed up a tablespoon. As you can see here, it's very little. This is the good stuff. This is what I would use in my soap. That's really it, folks. It's not much more complicated than that, but I just wanted to share this with you. So if you have a question about why do you freeze milk, now you know. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this, everyone. I hope you have a terrific day, and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye.